One of my running friends once told me that you should never underestimate the intimacy of time spent on the road together. It's true, and I think the same can be said of cycling. So when the choices for the 2013 CFWF farm tours were first posted, I knew immediately I was choosing the bike tour. On the morning of the tour, our group met Matt, our guide, who fitted us with bikes and helmets. There was a sense of both excitement and trepidation in the air, but as our group of 20 or so cyclists rolled out of the Harrison Hot Springs parking lot and slowly pedaled down the winding highway, we knew we'd be forming new friendships through shared experience. It was cold, bitter cold, and you could see that some were questioning their decision to cycle. But as the gentle fog lifted to reveal an immense backdrop of mountains and some of the most fertile agricultural land in the province, we all knew that we had made the right one. Together, we pedaled from one farm to another, learning about agriculture in a small setting. It was nothing short of fantastic. Our first stop was Farmhouse Natural Cheeses, where local cheesemaker Deborah Amring Boyce told us about her handcrafted artisan cheeses. She is one of only 12 people in Western Canada and the US to have been inducted into the prestigious French Cheese Guild. While we warmed our hands in the morning sun, Deborah offered us samples of some of the most wonderful chevre I've ever tasted. Spread lightly over a thin cracker and drizzled with local honey, it was absolutely divine. At our next stop, Shergill Cranberry Farms, we learned about BC's cranberry industry. While we sipped on Ocean Spray cranberry juice and played with the farm's friendly dog, farm manager Bob DeRoche and manager of the BC Cranberry Growers Association Mike Wallace spoke to us about the importance of this small but viable industry. Refreshed, we mounted our bikes and pedaled to our next destination. After a 3.9 kilometer jaunt along twisting turning roads, we stopped at a small hazelnut orchard where we learned about how the industry is coping with eastern filbert blight. Before hopping back on our bikes and heading off for lunch, we sampled dry roasted hazelnuts and purchased treats to take home. For lunch, the group cycled to the Pacific Agri-Food Research Center. Bikes were parked, helmets were removed, and lunch was eaten. It was here that I decided to have not one, but two Nanaimo bars. They could, after all, be considered local fare. After lunch, we headed to the University of British Columbia Dairy Education and Research Centre to meet farm manager Nelson Dim for a tour of the facilities. We learned that with time, dairy cows can be trained to urinate over grates in exchange for rewards. At our final stop, one of Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada's five research stations, we learned about integrated pest management and insects bred specifically to control pests. It goes without saying that this year's CFWF conference will be hard to beat. It wasn't just the cycle tour that made it so wonderful though. It was the friendships that were formed along the way. There is something to be said about the intimacy of time spent on the road together. When we first left the parking lot that morning, we left a group of unfamiliar faces. But when we returned, we had stories, we had shared experiences, and most importantly, we had friendships. I can't wait to see where next year's CFWF conference takes us, but more than that, I can't sit, wait to see who I'll meet along the way. Go. Sleep is for the week. Right.